Hey everybody, welcome back to Creating Your Creel. This is getting really exciting. We're getting into the meat of this project. Uh, just a little note, this is not going to be as linguistic heavy as my previous videos. This is more about the history of the people that we're going to be working with, and we'll start creating some words and phrases that they'll be using. Welcome to the Indian Ocean in the late 1600s. This is Madagascar. At this point, Madagascar was already part of the European slave trade, where they would come around the southern tip of Africa and travel all the way over to Asia. Port Dauphin was a French settlement on the southern side of Madagascar that did not last very long. There were a lot of conflicts with the native Malagasy, and this port was eventually destroyed and abandoned. And Madagascar itself became a place where a lot of uh, slave traders and Europeans in general would just avoid because of the reputation of pirates and violent interactions with the native people. So in the late 1600s, a ship leaving Port Dauphin on its way across the ocean gets caught in a storm or is uh, surrounded and thrown around by the ocean currents, and they end up uh, on our island here. This settlement is made up of approximately 50 French people with very few women and 300 Malagasy enslaved at the moment, but we'll see. The first plan of the survivors on this island is to build a new ship. Somehow their ship was destroyed or damaged, and they try to build a new ship in order to send a envoy to uh, India or somewhere to return with rescue. Makes total sense. This is what you should try to do, leave everyone there, and they can try to survive until rescue comes. But rescue never comes. So in order to keep our settlers on the island, I've decided they don't have enough materials to build more ships. Uh, it would be in their best interest to actually invest what few trees and supplies they have in actually creating a society where they can survive instead of investing in a ship that, if the previous one wasn't going to make it, their new one will not be strong enough or big enough to complete the journey. So while this settlement is being made, there is a class separation between the masters and the enslaved, and this is where the pigeon develops. This is, of course, not going to last very long because there's no reason for the slave trade situation to continue. There is no trade. And with so many people, they are now working together to survive. So over time, this will become more cooperative. There may be some uprisings. There probably some infighting. Uh, at one point I thought, well, how can I kill off all the French after they've created a pigeon? Like, maybe they wouldn't intermingle with the Malagasy and they all died of some form of syphilis. I don't know. Uh, but at some point they do start working together. Because there are fewer women on the French side, they will start intermarrying and having children. And the second generation, possibly maybe the third, I might need to change that to the third, will begin to speak this language as their mother tongue, which will create the Creole. The only slide we're going to actually talk about language is this one right here, uh, where we can look at some of the first words. We're not going to get into a lot of the grammar here because there's some very complicated things that are going to happen when we combine Malagasy grammar with French, but we can look at some of the pronunciation things that we've talked about before and make some small sentences. So looking at the question words, in French the word comment uh, would come out as como. Remember we're extending the nasal when it uh, doesn't come before a plosive and the T is silent here so we're just going to elongate the O so it's como. Uh, combien would be como combien. So this is a little bit of a reduplification here, where like como como, but it would be como combié, and again with the e being extended because of the nasal. U in French and ise in Malagasy, both meaning where. I decided to combine into u isa mostly because Malagasy words are not often one syllable, so a one syllable question word doesn't carry enough meaning, so I would think hearing that sound as a Malagasy, you would want more information. Uh, 
it's in no way scientific and hey this is a conlang so i can do what i want um so i decided to combine the two and the apostrophe here between u and isa is indicating that this is not a diphthong these are actually separate syllables u isa and ki becomes kie and i would combine it with the verb here of e as in b because the copula does not exist in malagasy so all f- words that equal B is am, are, was, were, so sui, e, som, et, all of these French words will not directly translate into Malagasy, but because they're constantly heard in combination, they can be combined to create one word. So qui e becomes qui e. And looking at pronouns, which are going to be both subject and object pronouns, because we're going to sort of, I guess it's a leveling or a simplification of the lexicon, and they are the same in Malagasy, so why not keep them the same here? So, two uh, is the easiest one here, uh, meaning you. We are not going to change it at all. And if anyone has questions about vu, I am going to save that for later. I have some ideas for what I want to do with vu. Um, je... The pronoun for I in French is going to become J. The French je is going to become hard. And because we usually hear je in combination with a, uh, we're just going to combine them as it's going to be reevaluated in a the ear of the Malagasy speakers as J. Il and L are a little interesting because Malagasy does not differentiate between male and female. So the words themselves, il and elle, are really close anyway. So when they come in combination with e, just like qui e, so this would be il e and elle, um, I decided just to combine them, make them one, and it's just ile. Ile means he or she. The plural, on the other hand, of, we're, I'll literally say them, ils and els in French, when they really sound exactly the same as the singular, il and elle, if they're not actually reading these words, would be heard as the same as the singular. So the Malagasy ear would need more information to know that this is a plural. And since we know the present tense verbs other than uh, have and be do not really give any oral clues, uh, if we combine this with the Malagasy word ireo, we can come up with a word like irireo, which can be shortened to iri. And the last pronoun here is on or nu. I've decided I want to use nu instead of on because it ends with a vowel and Malagasy words end with vowels. Uh, So nous avons is a common combination. So nous a is now going to be our word for we. Last, we can try to put some phrases together here. Uh, Where is he would be où is elle. Who are they would be qui est irideo. Uh, how tall are you? Como ote tu? Uh, ote here coming from the French uh, o, meaning high. And how many trees are there? Como combie l'araba? L'araba coming from the French arbre, meaning tree. So please leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I would love to hear uh, some answers to this question. What words or phrases do you think would be learned in the first days and weeks of working together? On this island, people from two different languages need to communicate. What words do they need to uh, get their society going? Give me some ideas. Let me know. Try to change some of the words into Malagasy using my sound rules from the previous videos. I'd love to hear your ideas. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.